Hey, before we get started, I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear your opinions, your thoughts down below in the comment section. And if you enjoy this video, I would love for you to subscribe. We're always rolling out with fun, fresh content uh, and fishing stuff all the time. So anyways, enjoy this video. All right, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Man, I cannot believe my eyes. I can't believe what I just saw. I just saw the release of possibly a new LVS live scope transducer from, of course, Garmin. And uh, yeah, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know how I feel about live scope. I honestly, you guys know, I'm a professional guide. I've been a fishing guide for a decade in Western North Carolina, upstate South Carolina, North Georgia, where traditionally our fish suspend offshore, right? A lot of nomadic, pelagic, roamers, they get out over hundreds of feet of water chasing around herring, threadfin, yellow perch, schools of crappy, but mostly threadfin and herring, that's kind of the deal. Whether you're fishing for spotted bass, smallmouth, and even, I'm telling you, herring are apparently like laced with crack or cocaine or something because it literally makes the largemouth nomadic pelagic fish, I can't tell you how many fish, largemouth, I've caught on all of our lakes way out in no man's land, right? Just scoping around, jig head minnow, A-rig, swim baits, whatever. And obviously there's little keys and nuances to finding those little deals, which obviously is available at fishtips.com. Link is down in the description. But LiveScope has 120% changed the game as far as Highland Reservoir fishing. And Take a look at this footage right here. Okay, you can tell 100%, look, that's a Berkeley finisher dropping. Big bass comes up, eats it, are you kidding me? I, there's a catfish in the background, I see a walleye in the back. Like, what in the world am I even looking at? That bass comes up and inhales it, golly. I could only imagine the thump of the rod from that freaking thing eating, but I actually don't know. I think this is totally fake footage, but I'm like, holy cow. When is it going to stop? At like what point in time is technology too much in a sport? And to be honest, like I said, I'm really for forward facing sonar as a guide. I find it very fun to one, tell customers like, hey, we're around them, you just suck. No, I'm kidding, I don't actually say that uh, because a lot of times I can't even catch the fish on forward facing sonar too, which makes it obviously I think there's a lot of skill still involved in understanding distances when to work baits you know honestly it's a lot like glide bait fishing many of you guys know that I pretty much made a name for dream catchers fishing dream catcher guides myself fishing big glide baits for trophy sized bass where you're reading their body language you're seeing how they're orienting to the bait as you're working it and honestly live scope is very much that you're constantly reading body language uh, and you're trying to trigger fish to strike so, you know, it's very similar, but at the same time, I'm like, huh, there needs to be some kind of, I don't know, some kind of limit on the amount of technology or what kind of technology we are coming out with. This is the reality of the situation though. I honestly don't think that our sport is ever going to go back to pre forward facing sonar unless you get events like the TAA, the TAA, the Tournament Anglers Association. Maybe they had that tournament on Lake Lanier that was a no forward facing sonar tournament, which I thought was great. So there are some tournament trails and some series, I think, that are going to adopt that. And I think those are really fun and awesome. I don't know necessarily what the future is going to hold for forward facing sonar on the Bass Pro Tour and the Elite Series. But I do know this. I think technology is getting a little wild in our sport. And I honestly, I honestly, honestly, hear me out. I do feel like it is taking away a little bit from the experience of fishing. And you might say, well, how? And a few reasons. Uh, one is I am someone that likes to have fun. I like to talk. I like to interact. I like to joke around. I like to have a good time out on a boat with friends, enjoying God's creation. But sometimes I find myself staring at my live scope and not actually having great conversation and fellowship with the people I'm in the boat with. So, you know, it's one of those deals. It's like, 
man, I, when I think about fishing, I think about relationship building. I think about enjoying God's creation. And a lot of times I, and I know other anglers, uh, I've been on the boat with some of the best anglers in the world. Man, we get so dialed into the live scope that we totally forget to even have conversation, to cut up, joke around, have fun, and really build a relationship. It literally just becomes about catching fish and trying to fool fish on a screen. And honestly, that is not, personally as a guide, that's not the kind of experience that I wanna to provide to customers, to youngsters. I mean, I even find myself sometimes with my son, my wife, my daughter in the boat, if we're fishing, we go fish for brim or something, and I'm like, hey, let me go fish for some bass. Man, I'll get so dialed in that I just, honestly, I personally don't think I make the experience that fun for my family because I'm just glued to a live scope. And uh, yeah, the other thing is tournament fishing, I kind of feel terrible for co-anglers because a lot of guys, especially once again on our Highland Reservoirs, dude, this is just how you catch them most effective. That's just the reality of the situation. You will catch fish most effective when utilizing forward facing sonar. We have deep clear lakes, 45 degree angle banks where the fish, you know, if this is the bank and this is way down in no man's land BFE, the fish will suspend somewhere out here offshore. And traditionally it was just kind of luck catching those fish, right? But now that is the way you target them. And a lot of times they're plus size fish. They're on schools of bait. You can find bigger bait and find bigger fish on bigger schools of bait, whatever. But I feel bad for the co-angler because there are a lot of times stuck in the back of the boat, out in no man's land, just fan casting, having no real idea, direction or anything. And don't get me wrong, there are mobile live scope systems. And actually, here's some of that footage on how you can get one. Are scoping that's just you're able to present the bait make the cast to the fish people tell you it's a tool in a toolbox it definitely has its strengths and it has its weaknesses scope makes it easier because you can actually see them when you find them so anyways uh we are hooking it up i guess is this like the toolbox that has all the the everything in it uh that one's the trolling motor box this is the yeah. okay we got the trolling motor box oh my gosh that's insane and then we've got the the GLS 10, the 126 the Black SV. Fox 126 SV. Did y'all grab that off my boat? I did. Oh, sweet, dude. And then if you want to come over here, I'll check check out the inside. Oh, oh my gosh. Are you serious, dude? Look at that. So we got the black box. We've got the 12 volt battery. Got everything hooked up. We got a kill switch for it. And then it runs. Now, hypothetically, Big Mike, people could put this on a mount and go off the side of the boat in like a, a freeway, right? Yeah, there's no reason not to. Yeah, I mean, this literally, when, when you, at, at the end of this video, you're gonna actually see us disconnect, reconnect, roll this thing out. Maybe even we'll put it on a boat and show you how it uh, how to set it up. It's it's We've made it idiot proof. If you can't do it, I guess you know what uh, spot you fall in. All right, yeah, so. <laughs> he said they're, make, they're making it idiot proof, which, uh, if you know me and have watched the channel long enough, you know that most things around me need to be idiot proof. Oh, and here's the deal too. If you are interested in a mobile live scope system, we can hook you up. Call the shop 828-354-0250. It will benefit you greatly. We're making it happen. All right, so Jennings is literally wheeling the 24 volt battery system and the 12 volt battery system. The 12 volts obviously for the unit. The 24 volt is for the trolling motor. Into that box so it doesn't get everywhere. Cause I know when people first saw that little video clip, they're like, oh, the wires are everywhere. You're gonna fall in the lake. Well, there you go. There's your self-contained unit right there. Now you've got that. Plug this into the trolling motor. Back yonder. The uh, arrow goes down. There you go. I'm done with that. And now I'll press the button. You'll see the thing spin. Unreal. Turn the scope on. Oh my gosh. So, you know, there's there's a deal, you know, where co-anglers can have mobile live scope, which is a little invasive. But, you know, it's one of those deals. I just I'm like, man, I don't think it provides the experience that I want to have when I'm with friends, with my family, whatever, out on the water. And then listen, I do think there is an element of understanding bass, like patterning bass, their behaviors, 
you know, what they're doing in the winter time, transitioning into the spring, spring into post spawn, post spawn into summer pattern, summer into fall, fall back into winter. Like I do think there's this deal that's a lot of times forgotten. And to be a hundred percent honest, because those seasonal patterns are forgotten a lot, I think there are certain techniques. Like seriously, I own a tackle shop and we still sell a lot of baits, all different kinds of techniques and everything. But I do talk to other tackle shop owners that said they have seen some sales slow down with certain techniques because they just think those techniques are far less effective than techniques you would utilize with forward facing sonar. And I'm like, man, I don't think I've seen that in full fruition, but I can definitely see where, you know, the jig head minnow, jerk baits, hover juggles, like fishing for suspended fish and techniques you utilize to target those fish have definitely taken over the game and made some of those shallow water techniques uh, maybe a little less desirable, uh, you know, but that's just kind of where where we're at with the live scope. I saw this footage of the of it like it looks so realistic and I'm like there's no way I did my research I'm just saying they might they might be coming I'm, I'm assuming right just with technology advancements dude they're always trying to make things cleaner clearer faster better pixels all this other stuff it's eventually coming uh, you know but it's definitely something to think about um, you know it's like what kind of experience do I want to provide on the water? I enjoy chasing giant bass with big swim baits. I can obviously do that with live scope. I think you can do it without live scope. Um, you know, and I think it just depends on what kind of experience you're trying to have. Now, this is what I know, and I honestly feel this way. If you are not utilizing forward facing sonar, you are being left in the dust. And I don't care whether it's typical vertical mode or horizontal. Uh, you know, perspective mode, if you are not utilizing some sort of forward facing sonar, I'm serious, you are being left behind. So it's definitely one of those things to weigh, you know, as an angler, I know the kind of experience I want to provide to people that I share the boat with out on the water, uh, you know, whether it's a guide trip or even whether it's a buddy buddy tournament, you know, it's like, hey, it's important to put things into perspective, like, it's more than just about catching fish. So, you know, I think, uh, I think forward facing is a great tool, but my hope is definitely like that. This is as far as technology goes in the sport. Like I don't think one, I, and maybe I'm not very innovative, which is totally possible, but I just don't see how much further technology can go. It's like, Holy cow, we're watching fish swim in their natural environment a um, hundred feet away from the boat and we're presenting lures to them. Like it's insane that we're even thinking about that. I mean, I guess years ago I thought about, man, it'd be really cool if I could have a sonar like that. It's like, holy cow, they came out with that. And then I'm like, okay, like that's as far as I want it to go. Uh, maybe it will go further. Obviously it probably will, but just something to think about. But I want to hear from you. I want to hear your thoughts on forward facing sonar. I want to hear your thoughts on this video right here, this footage uh, of the new live scope transducer. And uh, yeah, tell me your thoughts down in the bottom and would love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching.